Hi, this is Jared from Yellowwood Guiding, and this is the third video on using the histogram. We're going to talk about using your histogram in landscape photography because it's often some of the most challenging you can get. You got bright skies, you got dark shadows, and we're going to use that histogram to make sure you get the right exposure. So here's a good example. You're out here at Sprague Lake in the morning. We got some actually some nice clouds, which doesn't happen all that often in the in the mornings. It's always a gamble, but when it happens, you got to make sure you get it. So how do you make sure you got your exposure correct in a shot like this? We don't have a lot of white. We have some whites up there, but those aren't pure white. It's this nice yellow color. And what's most important, that up there, or what else do you look for? And this is the key. Sometimes you look for the blinkies, but sometimes you want to look for the shadows. Shadows fall within this area of your histogram. Generally in this region, that's where shadows, the darkest shadows, are going to be close to that black line, and then they get brighter and brighter. So we want detail in our shadows, those dark trees. How do we do that? And that's really easy. All we got to do is make sure this left edge isn't touching, isn't too close. Here's our hump. That's where it starts. And we have a lot of those colors right in through here, a little bit in there. I want to make sure those are as bright as we can make them so we go brighter. So how bright do we go? This is always the challenge. You can keep going brighter until you get the blinkies, but that's going to be tough. Those aren't really super white, so we should be off to the edge. So the, using the shadow, that's one good way. We want to be a, a little bit, generally about halfway between your first column on an icon and at the very right edge of the first column on your Canon camera. So sometimes, though, you do want to actually touch the edge. So if you look at a shot like this, I wanted a silhouette. I wanted to get this nice and black. I didn't want to see detail. And the way you do that is really simple you underexpose the whole shot. The more you underexpose, the more saturated colors get. So that gave us a really nice, rich, saturated sunset. But you can go too far. You can make this really, really dark. So how do you know how dark to go? Well, I wanted this black, so we're touching the edge. You can see how thick this line is right here. That's black side. But I want to make sure that it's bright enough, that it, we're getting enough detail and enough color. So here's our brightest areas in the picture. They're not pure white. They should be somewhere around here. And look, that's where our histogram ends. This is really common. It's always tough to see the very bottom line. But you can see how there's a little bit thicker and then just a little dot right there. That's the end of our histogram. So that tells me we got that just about perfect. So sometimes you go back to the old standard rules. Don't touch the edges. Here's our right edge. We're not, we don't have any brights here in the sky and the snow, so that's good. Even this area is not a blinky. But we want to make sure we're bright enough so that we're not getting uh, these darker areas, these greens. We know green trees should be here, but we want to make sure these dark shadow areas are not just really deep shadows so we're not in this area. Very little of the histograms there. So we adjust it and move on. Sometimes you can't solve your problems with a filter. Sometimes you need to solve, have another solution, and that other solution you can do in photography is called HDR. HDR is where you take multiple shots of the same setting, generally through bracketing or auto exposure bracketing, or you can even manually adjust it. So you take a dark shot, a bright shot, and a medium shot, and sometimes you can take five or seven or as many as you want to blend them all together in software called HDR software. Generally, most folks use Photomatics or uh, uh, HDR Pro. Uh, CS5, Photoshop, all those have HDR software uh, built in. So what you're looking for first is you want to take your shot so that you're getting detail in all the important areas. So this first shot, you can see the whites are way too overexposed. That's way too bright. But I wanted shadow detail in all of these rocks. I wanted to make sure that we got some green in the trees. So here's our lump. That's my green trees. I wanted to make sure that was green. I even took a, a slightly brighter picture than this that was way too bright and obnoxious to show. So then I took this shot. I took another shot slightly darker. This was my average shot to get this area just about right. And then I wanted to make sure I had a shot where the whites were just perfect, so I went even darker and got those whites just there. See how dark this is. If you tried to use that shot, there's no way you could make it work. I mean, we're really close to the blinkies here. Look how dark everything is. That's why you sometimes need to use HDR. So look at the end result. We blended all those shots together in software, and we got green trees. We got you know detail in our rocks, and we got all this detail, and nothing is a blinky. That's the trick. Look, we're right up close to the edge. We're close to the edge, but we're not over the edge. And sometimes that's what you need to do in landscape photography. 
Here, sometimes when the light is not very good for landscape photography, you go with black and white. And black and white you can convert later. But if you're going to go black and white, you got to think about how dark do you make your picture. Again, you still don't want blinkies. So the general rule of thumb is if you have anything white or anything really, really bright in your picture, you keep adjusting your exposure brighter and brighter and brighter until you get a blinky and then go back one. So here, we're really close to the edge. Where's our blinkies? They're going to be right here, right in here. And you might even get some right here in the roof. So you keep going brighter and brighter. You take a test shot, another test shot, and adjust brighter and brighter until you find it's just right and dial it in so that you're not getting those blinkies. And then here, here's our blacks. Blacks are almost touching an edge on our tree and down here in the, in the barn. But that gives us this nice dimensional feeling, and uh, it makes for a really good shot. So there's times when you don't have pure whites. There's nothing that's really, really bright. So what's the most important thing in this picture? Remember, we want to saturate our picture. So I want to make it dark enough that these pinks really show up. These pinks and purples were really great. And on the mountain, that was great. But I couldn't really get many blinkies up here unless the sky was basically white. You know, I don't want a white sky. I want it purpley and pink. So I wanted to make sure it was a dark enough shot that it was going to come out with color. So how do you do that? How do you know you get it just about right? And the way you do that is the trees. The trees right here are our key. There's no sun on them, so they're very dark. But there's no shadows. They shouldn't be shadowy. Shadows are right here. So I want this spike to be somewhere in this area. And that's what I did. This had to be the compromise to get everything just about right. But your spike on your trees is really what you're looking for to make sure you got it right. So again, you can use trees to get a shot where there's no pure whites. We've got these bright oranges. And we got sky up here, but there was nothing pure, pure white. So I wanted to make sure I got the rich color. So it's just a few clicks darker than when the blinkies would show up. But my trick here is I'm using these trees. These are sort of dark. This is pretty dark in here. And that's this hump right here. That's going to be my dark bluish green trees. And that tells me I got the shot just right. Here's a shot here. What would be a blinky here? A lot of people would look right here in the sky. But actually, that area wasn't too bad to control. The biggest area was right in through here. I was getting some blinkies. So to make sure those were bright, I had to underexpose. But I didn't want to go too far because I wanted some detail in these trees. So these are dark blue trees with the snow on them. So again, our spike should be right in this area. That's exactly where we got it. If you take a look at a shot like this, and you have, um, you have this ice, and we have this mixture of, of really brights, and we have some darks. So is this brighter or is this lighter? That's what you got to learn to look at. What is, what's the tonality of this picture? It's brighter than average, but it's not super duper bright. So we have a histogram that's brighter than average, but not super duper bright. That's what you want to look for. So sometimes shots get really easy. Something like this, it's really easy to get a shot like this exposed properly. I had to use a graduated filter to darken the sky, and that would darken the sky and a bit of the snow, but I didn't want to darken these trees. So we've got snow. Snow is going to give us the blinkies and the bright sun. So I dial it in until the blinkies disappear. And then how far darker do I want to go? Well, I've got dark trees. Dark trees with hardly any sun on them should be right in this area. And that's exactly where our spike is. So I know that's right. So then what else can I use to make sure it's right? Well, there's yellow, but there's not a lot of yellow. The yellow stands out. That's important. But we've got a lot of this medium green with sun on it. Medium green with sun on it. It's going to be all across here. It's not a lot on this side. So that's telling me we got we got this shot right. The sky helps the, the uh, medium green and the dark trees. All that together. Make sure you got it. So here, what's the most important shot to make, or what's the most important in this shot to make sure it works? And it's the shadows. These deep, dark shadows need to have a little bit of definition. So in this shot, it was just a little bit probably too dark. We should have gone a little bit farther. There's the edge of our histogram, or there's the edge of our data, edge of our histogram. We could have gone a bit brighter, and that would have made these trees stand out just a little bit more. Here, is there any blinkies? That's not going to be a blinky, but maybe right there, maybe right there, these little tiny areas might give you hints to know how far bright do you go. And that's exactly what we did here. We kept going brighter and brighter and brighter to these blinkies. And then we backed off one click to make sure that those had some detail in them. And the end result, we got some nice color in our trees. Even over here in this really dark shadow, we got a little bit of detail. See our spike here in that dark shadow areas of all these shadows really come out. 
here's a shot. What do we use? Well, it's really simple. We do have some snow. But what if there was no snow here? What could we use? You know, what's going to be a blinky potentially? Well, right here, this might be a blinky. That's pretty darn bright. Right on the tops of these rocks could also be. So those are all some clue areas you can look at to make sure they don't overexpose. You don't get a blinky there. But also we could use the dark blue sky. This sky was really that blue. I didn't use a polarizer. And dark blue sky is going to be right here. And that's exactly what we see in our shot. So here, here's a shot. I wanted the greens. The greens really contrasted well with the purples and the blues. I wanted that to really shine through. So what do you look for? There's nothing really pure white. These are all orangey in color. So we really can't use those exactly for blinkies. I mean, they're really close. If we went too bright, they would turn white, so they shouldn't be. So our spike should be, this should be really low on this side, exactly that. But the real key to this shot is this area right here making sure that there's a little bit of detail in that dark green evergreen but also right here this is a shadowed area of the riverbank so to make sure that that's going to be right I want to make sure that there's not a deep shadow there or right here and if you look this is where deep shadows live there's hardly much detail there there's you know there's just a little bit in these d really really dark areas so we don't have a big spike there we moved it off to the right and that tells us that we got a good exposure you know, we talked about black and white. Sometimes you can break the rules. Here's the rules really being broken on the left side. I mean, we're really touching a lot of blacks, and these areas are pure black. That does not ruin a black and white picture. Touching the right side, sometimes I'd often say don't get blinkies and even a black and white picture. I still had to use a graduated filter to darken the sky. But to get these dark areas dark and add that depth, we want to make it dark. So I underexposed to get this nice, deep, feeling and that's a great thing so remember if the light stinks try black and white but still don't get those blinkies so here's a shot what do we use i want i wanted these trees to be as green as possible because that's what we saw it was really a, a magical type of light it was this really great uh, time in the early morning so here's our dark trees i want those dark trees to be as bright as we could so this would be really dark this would be really really dark so i've moved that spike as far to the right as we could until the blinkies started showing up right here. Then they want two clicks darker to make sure we got a blue color in those areas because that's what we wanted to see. And then here's your final exam. This is a shot that has edges. I mean, we're literally touching both edges, but is it wrong? You know, we got to make the compromise. How do you get this shot? So we got to make sure the whites don't overexpose too much because there's lots of snow there. So we make it darker and darker and darker till the blinkies disappear. But if we go any darker, even two clicks past those blinkies disappear, and we'd give tons of these dark shadows that'd be way too dark. But we got to make sure we don't get blinkies on our elk. We got to make sure we don't get blinkies up here in the snow. So you just keep going darker. So remember to do that. Always check your histogram. Take a test shot. Check for blinkies. That's the highlight warning on your camera. Turn on the highlight warnings if you don't for the for the whites. And then check your histogram. The brightness histogram is really the key to making sure you got everything correct. And practice, practice, practice. Look at your pictures. Look at your histogram. And I guarantee you'll take better pictures. So I'll see you the next time we're out on a tour here in Rocky Mountain National Park.